welcome to Brew TV, your one and only beer and brewing TV show located right here in Perth. Every week we'll be exploring the world of beer and brewing in Western Australia, from the home brewer to the professional breweries and everything else in between. And for you cider drinkers and ginger beer lovers, we'll also include you as well. Good evening guys, uh, welcome to the Three Rivers uh, beer tasting night. Please come on in. Hello. 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 How are you? How's that for hospitality? We're at Trisha and Terry's place. Um, we're doing a beer tasting with the Three Rivers Brew. Mark, the brew is just over there discussing his new brews, and we're about to have a try. So, what on earth possessed you to open your house up to all these beer lovers? Well, family, you do what you can, you know. When we enjoy the beer, we like the beer, so we thought, why not invite like the friends around and let them have a taste as well? Yeah. It's it's a good way to get Mark's yeah. beer out there because uh, it's a beer that's worthy to be out there. It's a very enjoyable beer, and uh, we just like drinking with friends as well. Food, and why not with a beer like this? So we're just about to start um, one of our tasting nights. As we move towards a proper craft brewery, we, we run these sort of tasting nights to make sure that people are happy with the kind of recipes that we're coming up with. Um, a little bit of education as well in terms of how you taste beers. But really it's market research for me, so that I know that I can tweak recipes, a little bit um, less small, a little bit more hops for some brews. Um, but it's also a lot of fun. So you'll see a lot of people tonight drinking um, sensibly sized portions of beer and giving me feedback on it. Very important thing for me to do. Your part of the bargain for getting the free beer tonight is that you have to do some little assessments for us. Um, I think Trisha's got little cards that you have to fill in. Now you can be very basic and say number one was great, number yeah. two tasted like crap, that's okay, whatever, whatever you reckon. But if you want to put any more detail in there, too sweet, too hoppy, too malty, too this, that and the other, or really like that one, the, the more information I get the better so I can tweak those recipes. So um, I've got some tasting sheets here. I haven't got enough for everybody, but pass them around. What we're doing is we're doing a set of three beers. A cream ale, um, a Belgian white beer, so if anybody's ever had Ho Garden. And then we're going, what seems like a big jump, but isn't, it isn't, and I'll explain it when we get there, to a brown ale. Uh, a nut brown, like a Newcastle brown ale. Um, they're the first three beers. I think we're gonna have a, a bit of a break then and um, have a few beers to drink. first beer that we're doing, this is the Dog Days Cream Ale, and there's a description on there about it, but the Cream Ale, I would be very surprised if anybody here has had a Cream Ale before. You might have done. Um, people tend to think of it as sort of a creamy Irish red. It's nothing like that at all. The Cream Ale is almost um, an American lager, but it's brewed with an ale yeast. And I'll go into more details about that if anybody's particularly interested. So it's a kind of a weird uh, brew. Uh, it wasn't always my mid-strength beer, it's got a normal percentage of about 5.2 but I've uh, mucked around with the recipe and got it down to 3.4 because we, we think that we need to um, offer mid-strength beers at the brewery you know, for the designated driver and that kind of thing. So, I mean, if, you, if you've read the tasting sheet, you'll get some sort of hints about what it's going to be like. Um, think of sort of um, lemony um, flavours, cream certainly in there. This isn't a very full body beer, it's got a very whole, low hop level as well. It's well balanced, but not intense in terms of any of the kind of flavours you're going to get. Remember this is the mid-strength beer, it's kind of the least flavourful, despite my best attempts, um, of all of the beers that we, um, that we currently have as a, as a, a finalised recipe.
Tara here, she's not a beer drinker, so what did you think of that one? Um, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, yeah, I normally drink cider, yeah. I love it at home, so that was refreshing. But I'd definitely have another one yeah. if it's on offer. This is, we're starting to get into some flavourful stuff now. This is quite a, a strange beer if you're not used to it. This is a Belgian wit beer. So if anybody's ever had Hogarden, um, that's kind of the classic, um, made by Pierre Chalice uh, a long time ago and then re, um, regenerated back in, in America a little while ago. Um, so it's a, it's a strange beer. It's actually called a sour beer because of the kind of yeast that you use and a lot of the flavour actually comes from the yeast. But the recipe is also a little bit strange. You can see on the, on the thing that's going around. The two key ingredients that this has in that the other beers don't is it's got, um, or three in my case, it's got um, orange peel, lemon peel and coriander in the brew. So it's a very aromatic um, kind of beer, a little bit dusty as well because it's got some um, oats in the brew and it's supposed to be cloudy so it's not really a clear beer. It will settle in a keg but if it's a little bit cloudy that's a good thing with this beer. These beers are really fresh, uh, they're made with you know all natural uh, fresh ingredients, so you will get uh, more of a head on these kind of beers than you're probably used to in a pub anyway, just because they're fresher beers. If anybody wants to have it, taste it like it is, but then if you want to, put some orange in it. A lot of people drink this with orange rather than lemon that you would normally do. This is a half wheat beer, so about a half of the rest of the grain bill is wheat. The rest of it is um, a malt. Um, it's Pilsner, so it's got a, there can be some off flavours from the Pilsner grain. Got some more? Yeah, I have some more. Yeah, yeah, we've got this to get to. Um, so this, to get technical, needs to be boiled longer than a normal beer does when I do the boiling part of it. To drive off some of the, um, sort of the, the nasties, I guess. So what's the ABV? I can't remember all of them. That's all right. This one's 4.8. 4.8, okay. So as we move through this, we're going up in hoppiness. So the, um, the IBUs are the bitterness units, so they're going to get hoppier. Not quite that simple. Uh, and the alcohol, the ABV, alcohol by volume, is going up as we work our way through them as well. Back here again at um, Brewer's Delight, my local homebrew shop down here in Mandurah. We came here um, a couple of weeks ago and had a quick look around to see what Ralph Lambert, the owner, does. Um, it's the kind of shop that you can come to if you're just starting out doing homebrew um, and also you can do some brew on premises things here. So today we thought we'd pretend that we were absolute beginners to the homebrew scene and introduce people really to their, to their first homebrew if you like. So that's what we're going to do today. You want to like try try this, try this beautiful brewery here? I'll give one a go. That was super much. So what kind of beer is it? What have you made? This is our Tourie's Low Carb. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. We're thinking about. We're watching our waistline. We're thinking about our waistline. <laughs> Coming along nicely. <laughs> what do you think? Nice. Are you a beer drinker? I am a bit of yeah. a beer drinker. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice. Pretty dry. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, but still quite a bit of moldy flavour in there too. Cool. It's a very nice beer on a warm day. Yes, definitely. Yes, yeah. It could be on a cold day. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. <laughs> so last time we came here it was all a bit quiet, but obviously there's a bit of a production line going at the moment. Yeah, we're yeah. twice a week now. Yeah. Yeah. Cutting back a bit. <laughs> so you've been coming here for a while? Yes, I've been coming here for about three years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty happy with the quality of oh, beer that you're making. Definitely, definitely, yeah. And the staff, oh, the staff are unreal. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. And you yeah. don't even have to take all your beer home either. <laughs> if you have not much room in the fridge, you take a couple of cartons, they'll let you put it in the fridge there so you're ready to come and grab it. Okay, great. Mm. And, have you... and every year, every year, every Christmas, uh, we get a, get a present off Ralph, the, yeah. Man, yeah. the boss yeah. there, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very nice. Gives, gives us a carton each. Right? Yeah. yeah. Great customer care there for you. Oh, fantastic, yes, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. So how does that, have you worked with the cost out? What's it like compared to oh. if you were buying the same beer? Dollar a stubby. 
Is that right? Big saving. Big yeah. saving, yeah. 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 Well, your normal cart costs about $45. For this kind of a beer? Yeah. Like and, it, yeah. and here's about like 23, 23 bucks. Yeah. 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 Special, special for me because I'm a pensioner, too, you know, and you know, it's going to save me dollars, so. Yeah. <laughs>